What is up guys? We've traveled from Florida to Dallas to play some poker at Texas Card House. I sit down at the 2-5 game, get ready to get into the action here. Unfortunately, my camera wasn't set up for this first hand, but it is a wild one. There's a hijack raise to $30. I three bet next to act to $125 with pocket aces. And now the small blind who has around $1,500 in his stack cold calls my three bet of 125. The action's now back over on the initial raiser, who has $1,500 in his stack as well, and he doesn't want to call $125. He doesn't want to fold either. He wants to play for more. He bumps it up to $355. Bucks. Facing a four bet with pocket aces, it really doesn't get too much better than that. We all started the hand with $1,500 effective in our stacks, and honestly, I don't really know what to do here. Is the best play to flat call? in position or maybe to put in a min five bet all i know is that a lot of people don't four bet and five bets are just really rare a lot of the time when someone five bets they just have one hand and that's aces so i go back and forth whether i want to five bet to maybe 800 maybe i should just shove all in for 1500 but ultimately in position with the best hand i decide to trap here and make the call and the small blind makes the call as well so we're three ways in a four bet pot, our first hand here at Texas Card House in Dallas, and the flop comes out ace, 10, seven, two clubs, giving us top set. Flopping the best hand possible in a massive four bet pot, our first hand here at Texas Card House. However, this ace could kill our action. Let's say our opponents have hands like pocket jacks, queens, and kings. This ace is gonna be a scare card. The small blind checks, and the initial four better in middle position checks over to me. And now with top set, I definitely want to bet, but I don't want to bet too big. I slide out $250. The small blind doesn't think for too long and raises to $950. All right, not too bad. We're getting raised in a four bet pot, holding the nuts, top set on an ace high board. The middle position player who four bet preflop doesn't think for too long and folds. And with the action back over on me with around $1,100 in our stack, one option, that is all in. He makes the snap call. He asks to run it once or twice. I tell him one time and we have video. Good hand. You have aces? Yeah. I'm here with the heart. I knew. I knew. I knew. I knew. I knew. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 Aces hold our first hand here in Dallas, winning over a $3,000 pot. A cooler flop, pocket aces versus pocket sevens. Nasty one for my opponent. We end up taking this one down and have over a $3,000 stack within the first five minutes of our session. I've got my camera set up now for some live action table footage for you guys, and I look down at pocket tens from early position. I raised to $25, the cutoff calls, the button calls, and the big blind calls four ways, which is pretty common here in Texas. Flop is king four five rainbow. I decide to check, cutoff checks, button checks behind, turn six, I check again, the cutoff checks for a second time, and now the button who checked back the flop bets out $75. The big blind folds and I make the call. The river's a deuce, not the best card. I check, but he checks back and pocket tens are good. In this hand, I'm on the button and the cutoff player, the same guy who four bet me earlier when I had pocket aces, a very aggressive opponent makes it $35. I call on the button with pocket nine, small blind calls and the big blind calls as well. Four ways again to ace, eight, eight, two clubs. The cutoff player now bets $75 and against some people, I would just fold my pocket nines, but against this guy, he can definitely be C betting with a wider range of hands that pocket nines are definitely ahead of. So I make the call and the rest of the players fold. The turn card's a five of hearts, and now he checks over to me. It's an interesting spot whether I should bet here or check behind. There's a lot of cards I don't want to give a free river to. Queen Jack, King Jack, King Queen, Jack 10, all these hands that we're beating that do have over cards to our pocket nines. So I throw out $130 as a protection bet or a value bet against flush draws. And now he raises me. He puts in a check raise to 375 bucks. This line really does not make too much sense to me. Would he be checking the turn with a hand like ace jack or ace queen and then putting in a check raise once I bet? I feel like he wouldn't do that with a top pair holding. So he's representing hands like eight, nine, 10, eight, eight, six for trips. 
Maybe pocket aces would play like this, potentially. At first, I want to call and see what happens on the river, but I do think this is kind of a spew if I call here. I really don't have any outs to improve other than two outs for a nine. We could be drawing dead against a full house, basically. So I decided to try to make a discipline lay down here, given the fact that this check race is very rarely a bluff in these games. So I let my pocket nines go, and later on he told me he had an eight for trips, but he didn't show, so not sure if I can believe him. Either way, he takes this one down. It's now 1 p.m. and I haven't slept in over 24 hours. I had to get up super early for my flight out of Fort Lauderdale around 6 a.m., which means I basically didn't sleep at all. I arrived here to Texas around 9.30. I went right to the card room waiting for my hotel check-in to be ready. I got a call from the hotel saying that my room is ready to go. So I head over back there, I check in, I take a nap, get some food, and then get back to the card room around 8.30 p.m. It's dark now, the action is fired up, I actually get back over to the same exact table, I buy it for $3,000, ready to keep running it up. Right into the action again, first time it was pocket aces, this time it's pocket queens now on the button, the cutoff makes it $20, I re-raise to $60, the big blind cold calls, and the cutoff player calls as well. Flop is ace, seven, jack, two diamonds. When they check to me, I bet one third size of the pot, $60, big blind folds, and the cutoff makes the call, Turn king of hearts, another overcard to our pair. When she checks, I check this one back. River card 10, giving us the nut straight. She checks again and hoping she has a two pair hand she doesn't want to fold. I bet $200, but she's got nothing. She lets it go very quickly and we win a small one. Before we move on to the next hand, I have a super exciting announcement for you guys. Last week, I texted one of the owners of Hustler Casino Live asking if there's any openings in their upcoming games, and I got a confirmed seat in a 25-50-100 game going on August 31st in Los Angeles, California. I'm going to be buying into this game for $30,000. It'll be the biggest game I've ever played in my entire life. In order to reduce some of the variance and reduce some of the stress, I'm gonna be selling a ton of action for this game. If you wanna get a sweat and a piece of my $30,000 buy-in, listen to the end of the video where I go over all the instructions on how to buy some action. Basically, you're gonna be emailing me your name, the percentage, and the amount that you wanna buy. Make sure to tune in all the way to the end. I give all sorts of information there. But let's move on to the next hand here in Dallas. Next up, under the gun plus one raises to $30. I'm in middle position and look down at Kings, a great hand in no limit Texas Hold'em. I make it $125. The button who has $2,000 in his stack, four bets to 350 bucks. Back over to the under the gun plus one initial raiser who folds and the action's back over on us. So we're facing a cold four bet on the button by a player who hasn't really played many hands since I've been here at the table. Now, of course, he could have weaker hands like pocket jacks, pocket queens, but a lot of the time four bets are very strong hands like aces, ace king, pocket queens, and pocket kings. We could five bet here, possibly to $800, but I like to just call, see a flop, which I think is most likely the standard play. Heads up, out of position, four bet pot, pocket kings, and we see an ace in the window, followed by another ace and a 10. Honestly, it's not really the worst board. I was a little concerned that he could have pocket aces preflop, but now that there's two aces on the board, it makes it way less likely. There's really only one combination left that he could possibly have. I check over to him like I would do with all the hands I get here with, and he bets out 260 bucks. I don't think a raise is good. I think a call is our only option. He can still have ace-king. He can also have queens and jacks, and I don't want to scare him away with a raise. It really wouldn't make too much sense. So I call. It turns a 10, now double pairing the board. I check over to him, really hoping that he's going to check behind, and he does. We go off here to the river, which is a total brick. Now the action's back over on me. When my opponent checks on the turn, it doesn't mean he won't have an ace here. I'm sure he would be checking back to trap sometimes, and I think I would check back the turn because if he does have an ace, I'm basically drawing dead, and he wants me to try to bluff the river as well. I contemplate checking this river, but I still think there's a ton of hands I can get called by. Pocket jacks, pocket queens, all those hands might cold 4-bet preflop. 
Bet the flop and then check back this turn. So I lead out small here, 375 bucks into a roughly $1,200 pot. If I get raised, I'll have an easy fold, but I do think this sizing will get a call from pocket queens, pocket jacks, and maybe even a sticky king high. After thinking for a little bit of time though, he lets his cards go without too much of a decision. So he must have just been bluffing pre-flop and we take this one down in a four bet pot with pocket kings. So far, so good today. We've won with our big over pairs. We hit a set of aces and now we just won here with kings. We're picking up some hands and the chips are going in our direction. We're up over $1,500 on the session. We've been playing for about six or seven hours on the day now. So we're moving into the last hand of the night. An early position player makes it $20. He's a tighter, older man, really hasn't gotten out of line. With King Queen of Diamonds, I elect to turn this hand into a semi bluff and re raise to $60. The hijack cold calls $60, small blind calls $60, and initial razor calls $60. Tons of action here at Texas Card House. Four ways to a queen high board. It's super dry and pretty unconnected, so I down bet small here on the flop. I only make it $70. By betting small, I'm hoping to get called by smaller pocket pairs of the queen, 6x hands, maybe ace high hands, or it might induce someone to try to turn their hand into a bluff. The hijack folds, small blind folds, and now the initial raiser, who has around $750 left in his stack, check raises me on this board to $250. Now the action's back on me. This guy raised from early position, just called my 3-bet, and then now is check raising me on queen 6-3, a super weird spot. I don't expect him to have any two pairs on this board. A tight player raising from early position is never gonna have queen three or queen six. He could have a set of threes or a set of sixes, but I don't think he's even raising those hands from under the gun. He maybe could be trapping preflop with aces or kings, but that seems very, very unlikely. So I feel like we're only losing to one hand here and that's possibly ace-queen, and I don't even think he would check-raise on this board with that top pair, top kicker, so I just have one option, and that's to call. Heads up, turn four of spades with $515 left in my opponent's stack. He decides it's all going in there. He rips it all in for $515. We have top pair, king-kicker, and a three-bet pot facing a pretty strong action by my opponent. He check raised a flop and then goes all in on the turn, not really caring if I have aces or kings. It makes me feel like he has two pair or a set, but what can we do? It's for less than a pot size bet, so I flick in the chip. We're going here one time to the river, and we see the deuce of clubs, and he shows pocket jacks for an under pair. We show king queen, and it is good, and we end up stacking this guy on our last hand of the night, running pretty good taking down a pretty big pot. I'm honestly not sure what he was doing there. I'm not sure if he was turning his pocket jacks into a bluff or if he was value betting. Maybe the small bet on the flop got him to think that his hand was best, but either way, we take down this pot. The chips are being pushed in our direction. Our stack is over $6,500 at a 2-5 game. We shortly rack up our chips and head to the cage and cash out, booking a nice win of over $2,400. All right, guys, that is it for this one. Booking a win here back at the hotel, playing at Texas Card House in Dallas, one of my favorite poker rooms in the country. I love this place. The dealers are great. There's tons of action. The staff is amazing as well. If you want to play big pots, multi-way, crazy action, come down to Texas Card House in Dallas. Find out for yourself. I do want to talk a little bit more now about the Hustler live stream that I'm selling action for. It's going to be a $25, $50, probably $100 game. It's going to be a massive, massive poker game, way bigger than any other game I've ever played in my entire life. So I'm going to sell action for this game. I'm going to be doing a $30,000 total buy in, and then I'm going to sell percentages of that $30,000. So let's say you want to buy 5% of my $30,000 dollar buy-in. 5% of $30,000 is $1,500. So if you buy 5%, you'll send me $1,500 and then you'll have 5% action of my wins or potential losses. I think this will be pretty awesome for you guys to be able to sweat the action as well. You can watch the live stream. You can be sweating the hands along with me. If I win, 
you guys win as well. So I'm super excited about this. How it's gonna work is that you'll send the money, I'll use that towards my buy-in, and if I win, you'll get a percentage of what you bought of the win. So let's say, for example, you buy 5% of my $30,000. If I win $10,000, you'll get your initial investment back of 1,500 plus 5% 5 of 10,000, which is $500, so you'll make $500. So if I lose $10,000, you'll have your $1,500 investment. I'll use that investment and take 5% of $10,000 loss, so that's $500 away from your investment, and then send the, the at the rest of the $1,000 back to you. So it's not like a tournament where if I lose, you lose all of your investment. You're most likely gonna get your money back unless I lose $30,000, which is possible, but somewhat unlikely as well. So hope that makes sense. Um, it, is, it is a little bit confusing at first, but I've done this multiple times for other live streams. I've done this for tournaments as well. I have a great reputation. Um, I always you know, communicate with people, make sure everyone's happy and stuff like that. So if you are interested, and buying action for this huge Hustler live stream game coming out August 31st in LA at Hustler Casino. I want you guys to follow these steps. Please follow the directions carefully. So email me at lexozias at gmail.com, L-E-X-O-Z-I-A-S at gmail.com. In the subject, put Hustler live action, okay? Now down below, you're gonna put three things. You're gonna put your full name, you're gonna put what percentage of the $30,000 buy-in you want to buy. If you wanna buy 2.5%, if you wanna buy 5%, if you wanna buy 7.5%, 10%, you put that down below. It's in increments of 2.5%, and the minimum you can buy is 2.5%. I'm not gonna sell you know, 1% or anything like that. So you put your name, you put the percentage you wanna buy, and then the dollar amount of that. So if you're buying 2.5%, that's $750. If you're buying 5%, that's $1,500, and so on. So I want you guys to do that. Please follow the direction so it makes it easy for me. And it's first come, first serve. So the first amount of people that buy until I sell out, I'll email you guys all back and we'll start talking about how to move the money. Most likely it'll be over Zelle or Cash App or Venmo, but most likely, hopefully Zelle or Cash if you're in person, if you're from Florida and you can meet me at the Hard Rock as well. Um, I think that's just about it. Uh, I'm super excited about this. Hope you guys are excited as well. It's gonna be a massive game, and I uh, hope you guys can get a little bit of a sweat. So please follow the directions if you wanna buy action, and leave a comment down below, or you can find me on Instagram, at Lexo Poker, and send me a message there if you have any questions as well. But uh, that's it for this one, guys. Booking a $2,400 win in Texas. I forgot my outro. Oh yeah. Until next time, I'll see ya.